Bucks, go Bucks. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Go Bucks, go Bucks. First and go, we gotta tough it out. Get in the end zone, call a hot route. Go line the beast, right down the street. They have Humphreys run right underneath. You know it's Bucks ball, we got the hardest deep. Bring the pressure to the QB. You know it's routine, we got hard grease. Welcome to Tampa, welcome to Tampa. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Reppin' for my team Go Bucks, go Bucks You know we want the ring Go Bucks, go Bucks Welcome to the Bay Go Bucks, go Bucks Tune in with Buccaneer Blade Doug is back, we can run the toss Mike Evans lookin' like Randy Moss And team is make the play, out the play On the defense, you can't stop Levante On my boy McCoy, who you can't avoid At the Raymond James, you about to feel the pain You a Bucks fan, make a lot of noise If you a Bucks fan, make a lot of noise What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Buck and Blake Sports Live on Bucks Report. I know my co-host of Buck Blake and Blake Sports is going live right now as well on um, Bucks Report page. Peter Blake doing fan reaction. I'm sure he's getting a lot of those. Uh, talking about Jameis Winston and the San Francisco 49ers game, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> but first, I want to give credit out to all those other shows on Bucks Report that give it 110% 365. I want to give them get this early. Cannon Fire Podcast, Buck Ball Podcast, Real Bucks Talk, The Red Flag Podcast, and Buck What You Heard. Well, I'm not sure why Pewtercast isn't on there, but Pewtercast as well, uh, or Rendex. <clears throat> and you can always find me at my website, www.buckandblakesports.com, social media page, Buck and Blake. Check us out at Ferg's. Check out one of my little close sponsors, Tires to Go, that's on there in Pinellas Park. Uh, anytime shine for all your mobile car cleaning details he will go anywhere in this Pinellas County uh, Hillsborough County and clean your vehicle while you're at work but detail your vehicle while you're at work or um, at home and his contact is Chris and tires to go contact is Mike Munez so with that being said we're going to take our time Game summary of that game. I'm going to break down just the game summary. <clears throat> then I'm going to go to some things Bruce Arians said. Game summary. Buccaneers lose 31-17. to It was a close game up to two minutes. Um, passing for San Francisco. Jimmy Garoppolo goes 18 for 27. 166. One TD. One interception. Um, Jameis Winston. 20 for 36. 194. One TD. Three interceptions. Really, it's two. But it, unfortunately, the quarterback gets it. Uh, total stat yards, San Francisco 256, Tampa Bay 295. Rushing leaders was Ronald Jones, 13 carries, 75 yards. Um, Godwin was uh, three, recep three receptions for 53 yards, and Kittle for the San Francisco 49 was eight receptions for 15 yards, which was interesting was time of possession was uh, 70, uh, was uh, 30, 3004 for San Francisco and 2956 for us, so it's Pretty darn close, you know, with uh, uh, the two stats between the guys, um, between the teams. It was pretty close, almost identical. First down, San Francisco had 17. We had 21. Uh, defensive studs in that game were uh, Whitehead led the team with eight tackles. Um, Devin White had six tackles, five solo, I believe. Um, it, it was a decent call by the defense but before i get into all the other stuff i want to give you something that bruce arians recap of the game before i go into the uh offensive stuff because i'm going to talk about the bad stuff first on the offense and now i want to finish it up with the defense and if uh anybody has any comments or anything or wants to jump on live please do uh check out the webs uh the link in the description box you can click on that <clears throat> and it will bring you right to um uh, a waiting room and if that doesn't work when you click on the link when I ask you to, to download something just send it in an email to yourself and it should work don't know why that is but it does it like that all right so let me bring up what a what I want you guys to see here if you give me one second Okay, 
is playing online, but try to get to play on your live screen there. Okay. Good old technology. You can always count on it. You know what I mean? Or it was just Bruce. It was a Bruce Arians video. I wanted to show you guys him talking about uh, recapping the game. Give me one second. I think I know what it is. By golly, I think he has it. Interesting. Okay. So, so what? Uh, what basically Bruce Arians was talking about the decision on the plays and stuff like that. Um, the one play was uh, the first interception was a hitch route to uh, Peyton Barber with Richard Sherman behind him, <clears throat> and um, I think the ball. I mean, that's the importance of pressure. If you see on there, I think. The way the rush came around the edge forced the trajectory of the pass to go higher than it should. So Ronald, Ronald I mean not Ronald Jones, Peyton Barber couldn't get to the ball. I don't think it was a poor decision because Richard Sherman was bailing the whole game. Anytime Perriman was up on him, he bailed right at the snap. I mean because Richard Sherman really isn't built for speed. It's just a physical corner and he can make, he has great hands. Um but it, I think it was a good it was a good play. It was just a, a bad p- ball placement. Everybody keeps saying his decision making. It wasn't a bad bad uh, decision he made. Peyton Barber was open with the hitch route because he was going to play the hitch route underneath Sherman's coverage and then try to run for yards, which is basically a extended version of a handoff. What I what I believe happened on that play, if you watch the uh, the rush on Winston's right, our left, well their left, our right on the television screen. Um, Rush came around. Winston had to get it over the uh, rushing lineman and the offensive tackle because, you know, on that side, you have Damar Dotson at 6'9", so you have to kind of adjust your throw. And I think it just went off a little bit. And Winston was right. You got to put that on your, on his body. You don't want to make your running back jump up and make a catch as if he's a wide receiver. He's not too familiar doing that all the time. With backs, you usually catch passes, you know, around um, from – from waist to uh, chin area, that's a good place for them to catch the ball because that's about where you're going to get a handoff. And I think just the trajectory of the ball went off and it went, it sailed high because of the way the rush came. He tried to get the ball over that so it doesn't get hit by a defensive lineman. And, and unfortunately, it was picked. I don't think it was a bad decision. Everybody keeps saying that, you know, it was a poor decision, this and that. I don't think the decision was poor. I just think it was, um, <clears throat> it was just a bad ball thrown. And then luckily, it landed right in Richard Sherman's lap. Um, the other one at the end of the game, if you watch the replay, I watched it a hundred times, uh, the screen pass, uh, that's, that is a touch situation. It was a lose, lose all over. You throw the ball down, you throw the ball away. It's intentional granted. You lose yards and the penalty, uh, and down and penalty yards. Uh, if you take a sack, you lose yards and penalty. The only part you have to throw it at his feet. And I get Winston really didn't have an opportunity to, cause you couldn't see Dare through the traffic. I don't know why he went over. He went over. If you watch it, if you watch it, he went over the screen players and then tried to come back around. If he did just went under, uh, Jensen and the guys actually had good blocks and they had the seal there. He just had to get in the alley where he was supposed to be. And Winston was trying to trust him to be there, and he would have gotten there, but a linebacker had shot down and cut off uh, Dari's path, and he couldn't even get his hands or get to the ball. That's why it looked like there was nobody there. He was just smothered behind offense, uh, offense and defensive uh, players, and unfortunately, it was pick pick six, and what's ultimately ended the game for us. So, I mean, yeah, you can, I guess you can call that one a little bit of decision making. Just Winston was trusting his guys. You know, if Winston ever hears this or listens to it, man, at this point, you just gotta hold these guys accountable. If they're not there, throw it throw it to the ground or whatever it is. I know you're gonna take the blame regardless. Um, which happened most of this game, which there was a lot of passes he threw away and, and lived the fought another day because people just weren't open. You know, there's plays where they have five in coverage. You know, he had two players running out for a route. If they're not open, you throw it away. You sit there and try to razzle-dazzle and run around and stuff and get strip-sacked or something like that. Just throw the ball away and go to the next down. He did that a lot in this game. No, I don't think he forced a whole lot of passes. Um, 
It was one other pass, I think, to number 55. It could have been picked off on the uh, our sideline. On the far side, uh, Damar Dotson had gotten, not Damar Dotson, but uh, Donovan Smith had gotten pushed into Winston, and the ball went short <clears throat> when it was going to the receiver that was behind the linebacker on that play. That was the other one I know people were talking about that should have been picked off as well. But that was due to uh, <clears throat> uh, defensive our offensive lineman not holding his ground and getting pushed back into the quarterback when he was trying to make a throw. But that's fine if you want to blame Winston for that as well. Uh, I'm kind of like on the page right now of, um, you know, Michael Clayton. Uh, I'll call things out when somebody plays bad and they play bad. Um, you want to look at it. You want to look at the whole garbage. You want to look at everything as a totality. Uh, you want to you want to find out why was why the play was bad. And that's basically what Bruce Arians said as well. Why was it bad? What went wrong? So you got to look at it and figure out. What happened on certain plays? That play, I could tell you, he got pushed back into Winston and, and the ball was bad. Like, if you want to blame him for that, it's fine. I, I really don't care at this point. I've gotten to the point where if you just don't like Winston, you don't like Winston. If you, if you can understand what certain things are happening and what plays. I mean, this game could have easily went either way because stuff got called back on the offense uh, by Damar Dotson, two critical holding plays. One was called, called back a touchdown, which probably wouldn't have put us in the situations where certain – interceptions wouldn't have happened or we wouldn't have been in such a tight spot at the point in the game and Bruce Arians admitted risk it you get the biscuit we went for it instead of kicking the field goal down there in the red zone uh you go for the field goal guys jumped off sides you decide you had momentum you wanted to go in for the play um and that play as well that's why I wanted to play that video um Bruce Arians talked about that play too everybody's like oh Jameis was late well originally you, you had to shift the defense by doing certain things you can't just throw it wide away, right away. If you remember, it was twins. I'm going to say it from our standpoint. It was twins left. Um, Cameron Brait was on the far side. Uh, and then he came into motion all the way to cross. All the way across. No, it was, tw it was trips. Yeah, twins, twins, twins left. Yeah, and, and then um, uh, Brait came across the field. If, if the defender got caught up in the traffic between the defensor, defenders coming across, then you hit Brait for an easy walk-in touchdown. Because those receivers and corners would basically uh, pick each other off and he would be open. But it wasn't there. So you look back to Chris Godwin on two breaking in routes. And um, you throw it in that little window there from everybody sliding out to cover break. Just luckily, like Winston said, the guy didn't have anybody to cover. And he could get under that and get it. But Chris is supposed to sit. Chris Godwin's supposed to sit, not keep sliding over towards the defenders. You got to sit in the alley so Jet Winston could uh, uh, sit fire that ball in there and that's just the thing about football it's just everything is split second decisions split second on oh, somebody gets there or not or makes a read or gets somewhere where they're supposed to be at that time it's just crazy how a turn of events could happen we score on that the game's looking a little bit different we go up and uh play the ball they played a little different um what it should have could have would have this week one there's a lot of people play bad just remember you we could have been the dolphins to be honest, we could have been the Dolphins. Hold on, I'm going to try this one more time with this video. I guess I'm taking my time with you guys today. Let me see if I can get this to play. Family of SUVs has oh, something for everyone. We're working this The Hyundai family of SUVs, now starting at under $20,000. Hurry in today. Obviously not the outcome we were looking for. I think you can come just to one thing, that's turnovers. When we talked all week about winning the turnover battle and it's four to two, it's, it's always going to be tough, especially if we get a pick six and we give up two. Um, but there's a lot of good things we'll build off of. Um, well, short week, it's not going to be easy. But we'll be at work tomorrow and uh, watch this film, learn from it, grade it. Um, there were some really bright spots and areas that we can build off of and, and also learn why we're losing instead of winning. Um, and that was pretty easy. But uh, And we'll, we'll have a practice for, for Thursday night. Coach, on the first pick six, Jameis reads out, Barber reads curl. Was that the miscommunication there? No, it was a hitch. He threw a hitch. Just don't throw it against Richard Sherman to our running back. Learn from it. What was your biggest coaching obstacle offensively against their defense? Uh... Turnovers. We ran the ball extremely well. Uh, we we had first and goal from the 10. A couple of times don't score. One from the 11 there at the end. 
Um, I probably got greedy. Should have took the three points and kept it in a three-point game. Uh, but I, I felt really good about our defense. If we don't make it, we're going to get it back at the 50 with a lot of time left. And um, obviously, we didn't want a field goal in that. We wanted a touchdown. And we were, again, in two-down territory. We get a sack. So, uh, But over, overall, I thought our offensive line played really well. On that fourth down play, was, was Jameis late to, to Godwin on that? Yes and no. Chris should have slowed down and stopped. As soon as they passed him off, he should have sat down. That's the backside safety. And he kept running, and I think he was expecting him to stop. And again, those are all the learning things that we'll, that we'll build on. Bruce, what about Jameis's play today? You know, the, the last interception, he's trying to throw a screen, and the back doesn't get out. He's trying to throw the ball away. But, you know, he'd already got the one grounding call. So just throw it further, you know, or throw it at somebody's feet. We teach them to throw it at their feet. And I think it was just he tried to throw it away. It was a bad play. Bruce, talk about the grounding call. It seems a little odd. It was, <laughs> you, don't get, you don't see too many of them when you throw it over a guy's head uh, into the stands. You know, certain quarterbacks that's never called on, they called it on ours. Uh, Ronald Jones, uh, Bruce, is a bright spot today. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. I, I thought he had a lot of energy, uh, and he was hitting it. And uh, it's something we can really build off of. I was really happy with the running game. Have you ever seen five penalties for touchdowns called back in one half in your career? Uh, I never comment on officiating. I tried not to. That's why I get heart attacks. Sorry. Do you think your defense played played good? Played yeah, up until that last drive. You know, we gave up the three. We needed a three and out and uh, and give an offense a chance to, to get back down there. And um, But, you know, I thought the first half was outstanding. They were put in short fields. They got three or nothing. You know, especially the turnover at the half, um, defense scores. So it, overall, there's some things. We missed a lot of tackles. And again, penalties. We were our own worst enemy. We got them stopped. And again, whether it's pass interference or not, it was called. I was really in training game. You talked about Bucks beating Bucks. Was that really the case tonight? Did you guys beat yourselves more than the 49 I don't think there's any doubt about it. And that's what we talked about. Uh, at half even and, and before the game and, and right now that was the message you know when we stop beating ourselves we could be pretty good how'd the old line hold up against that pass rush tonight? i thought they did an outstanding job you know when we got beat it was the tight ends a couple of times so it looked like it was old but it was the tight ends that got beat uh you know he had to come out a few times but uh you know no, nothing really it's just we got to find him Say on that last pass, pass interference call down that, we, that was challenged or no oh, comment. They, I'm sure they're going to say it was a hail mary. I've never seen a hail mary thrown to one guy, and it wasn't a hail mary formation. But that's the way I'm sure they're going to say it was ruled. Anything goes on a hail mary now. Bruce, what does it say? I mean, because if that ain't pass interference, I what the hell is? You had a lot of confidence in Jameis on that fourth down play to say mm -hmm. oh, this is your. I mean, is that? Are you not? Oh, I love I love the play. Yeah. I, th I think. I think they actually busted the coverage, and, and it surprised him, and he threw the ball late. And, uh, but no, I, I love the play call. It was just the execution of it with two guys in a, in a situation where we haven't seen that one before because they just turned him free, you know? Speaking of the play call, how did you feel about Coach Byron Leftwich and the way he called the game today? Oh, I thought he called a very good game. You know, there were times, and, uh, you know, he, he found the running game and he stuck with it. Coach, their tight end was a part of their offense that was just all of it on the passing game. Was there a thought of maybe changing the defensive scheme to try and double it? No, we, we have a couple of doubles in there for him, uh, but we, we, we wanted to pressure more, especially in the fourth quarter we were pressuring, so somebody's got to cover him. It, or it's a fire zone, we're playing zone defense with a blitz. Did they formation to force you into certain things? They always do, but I mean, they don't force you into certain defenses. Your defense is played the way it is. Coach, What's your I was I was fine with Jameis other than the screen pass, you know the screen pass when the back didn't get out. Don't try to just throw it throw it out of bounds. If you get a grounding, you get a grounding, but don't, don't leave it on the field of play. What happened on the pick to Sherman? Was it Peyton didn't finish the route? Peyton ran a hitch against a very good corner. It was just a bad decision to throw it to a running back versus him. Coach, I know Coach Left, which is making the it's play okay calls. route, yeah. Coach, no coach left, which is making the play calls, but do you make a suggestion in the situation like sure. on fourth and two like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Coach, you went into it, you know, knowing that, that Jameis' decision making is what you wanted to work on, but there's two decisions you say you wish you hadn't made that resulted in, in points. So, where are you at with his decision making? I mean, it's, it's a, still a thing of growth. You know, you, you got a screen pass called. He could have thrown the quick out to the other side, at, but that's usually 
in a hot situation. And our running back, young running back, goes inside and doesn't get out on the screen. So throw it away. He was attempting to throw it away, I think. Uh, the other one was just, that's a bad matchup. Coach, on the fourth down play, you come out empty. They take a timeout. You change the play. Any thoughts of staying with the empty? No, it, it was basically the same play in a different formation. What's your, Bruce, what's your message to a young team about putting this one behind them? Quick. Uh, we have we have till 12 o'clock tomorrow, but we can't put it behind us till we learn from it. We'll learn from it. We'll watch it. Short week. We play Thursday night, and uh, then we'll be on the field tomorrow night. This is a team that has struggled the last 10 years with trying to uh, overcome a deficit. Sorry. This is a team over the last 10 years that's really struggled to overcome deficits and things like that. Uh, is that something that you've kind of identified as well, and how do you overcome that? Don't get in a deficit. We had a chance not to be in a deficit. We had a chance to be ahead, and we messed it up. All right, thanks. Well, there you have it. <clears throat> it was good. Uh, B.A. said a lot of things that he said. It, was, it wasn't bad. This, the thing I, I want to press to you guys, I know you're upset. I know you want to see Winston do well and you want to see this team do well. So let's look at it as a totality thing. Again, you're watching Buck and Blake Sports live on Buck's Report. Buck and Blake Sports, my page. Check out my website, very fan friendly website. Get on there, uh, communicate with other people on there. You can be a member or whatever. And I got, I'm, I'll have my own Madden league there as well. I'm gonna post some videos from my league. We give away a, um, <clears throat> a Lombardi Trophy uh, replica for the winners. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, just email me or hit me up on Facebook on my page or whatever. Um, but I am Blake Anthony. You can find me there. Bucks Report. Uh, but Blake and Blake Sports and Buck and, Buck and Blake Sports. Check out the website and any of the social media sites or anywhere like that. Uh, you can find all that. Or shoot me an email if you got videos and stuff you want me to post because I'll, I'll have no problem commenting that. I'll put it on the page. And if you're somebody who wants to get your own word out, if you want to be on Bucks Report or B uh, Buck and Blake Sports, I uh, never really work with anybody else on my page, so I don't mind. You know, somebody else want to get their voice out and their opinion out. I'm definitely looking for females as well to get out because a lot of these females in the in the Bucks Nation world want to get their words out as well. So we all welcome that here at Bucks Report and Buck and Blake Sports. But back on BA, what he said, um, it was a good route. <clears throat> like I said, I think Winston changed the tra trajectory of way through the ball. I, I can understand that. I, I didn't. I never played quarterback on a competitive level, but I've played, you know, out, out you know, in in leagues out here and stuff like that in the area. And um, when somebody's rushing, you do have to change the trajectory of where you throw it. Some people can do sidearm and overhand arm like Patrick Mahomes and baseball people like that. You can make those 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 kind of throws, but you don't exactly have that much muster on it. Mustard on it, meaning a velocity. The way you throw it, and if you watch that play, I think that's exactly what happened because the edge rush came right around that side and wants to try to get it over. Because I get what he's trying to do. You want to make, you want to get that ball over, but but coming with a downward trajectory. I think he kept the elbow up, which which went the motion, and it sailed and it sailed a little further than it had to, and Barber just couldn't get to it, and it landed right in Sherman's lap. It wasn't a bad decision. Like everybody keeps saying, bad decision. I think it was just a bad throw. It was a bad throw. And the second one, okay, that one was kind of a bad decision. He trusted his back. Back couldn't get there. Back went over instead of under the screen. Both sides were wrong. And as a result, Winston threw the ball, like Arian said, live the fight another day, take the grounding. And when you watch the tape later, I know the fans would have still complained. So a lot of people aren't going to look at the tape because if you if we would have threw the grounding or took the sack on that play, because either way you lose the yards if you take the sack or the grounding. Um, you lose the downs in the yards. Um and we kind of get put in the hole, too. It would have been inside of 20. It would have been ugly either way. Uh, but it doesn't end in the pick six. But um, Dari was the one that was wrong in that play. And it would have been Dari's fault for why we took the sack, to why Winston took the sack or took the ground. It wouldn't have been on Winston. I know, like I said, everybody would have blamed him anyway. But that's what would have happened. Uh, let me get some of these comments here. Everybody's in. Uh, welcome to the show, Anthony. Welcome, Kim. Welcome, Keith. Uh, you talking about the screen? Yeah, the screen. It, that's a lose lose situation in that screen. You can either take the sack and lose the yards, or you can take the grounding and lose the yards. Either way, you're gonna lose the yards, but you get the ball back the next play. 
again, like I said previously, Winston would have still gotten the blame. But you, you get the ball again. It would have been in a crappy situation, but it would have been inside the 20 even further. And second down. Uh, but you, you keep the ball and you get to see what the outcome is. Um, welcome to the show, Dan. But, yeah, that, that this screen was the really only poor decision. Otherwise than that, the curl was just a bad throwing ball. And I know it's early. There's a lot of teams in worse situations. Teams giving up almost 60 points and stuff like that. So, uh, Shaver. Uh, Shaver. Oh, okay, I got you. Uh, Winston has to limit the turnovers that are totally his fault. O.J. Howard went out. I'm glad everybody realized that wasn't him. O.J. Howard played god-awful. Um, when he said the tight ends got beat on that play, I think I was talking to Peter in the chat about that. Um, there's two plays I know specifically O.J. Howard just stood there like this, just pass blocking, blocking nobody. And Winston scrambling around looking for somebody. Well, if you don't have any in front, anybody in front of you, O.J. Howard, just go out for a pass or an outlet so Winston doesn't have to run. You do kind of owe this team with that stupid fumble that, that would have cost us three points in the game that nobody's talking about that led to a turnover. And then you, you basically gave up another turnover for dropping a ball that came right through your hands. And then you miss, then you don't block two people later on in the game, and your quarterback's under duress, and you're not blocking anybody. I don't know what what was up with O.J. Howard in this game, but it really didn't look like his head was in the game. Is he sick too? I don't know. Everybody else played with their illness in this game, and I hope it doesn't carry over to Thursday in the Panther game. I hope the bug is gone because Mike Evans definitely didn't look into this game. It didn't really look like we game plan for him too much either. Uh, we didn't really have too many opportunities. We would have thrown the ball to Perriman. Uh, I, I think it was a, a a really mild play calling. It wasn't bad play calling, especially establishing the run and trying to take pressure off your quarterback. And you were getting success in doing it. So I really don't think the play calling was uh, bad in this game. Um, I think they played real good coverage. I think in the first half, San Francisco played short. Uh, they played us um, short. They knew we weren't going to go vertical. Either they don't they don't think Winston can get the ball to these receivers, or they don't respect the receivers running deep. And if that's it. Uh, that's going to be a problem going in the future because that's what teams are going to game play to do. And you're going to play the Panthers with Kiko, uh, Luke Keekly and uh, that pass rush of Gerald McCoy and the and company, Kawan Short and et cetera, um, coming. So that if, if, you're gonna, if they can play press on us and uh, we're on the pass rush, we're going to be in trouble. You're going to have to stretch the ball and make them uh, respect the deep ball and get some balls vertical so uh, the defense can't play so far up and trying to force these balls short in these tight windows and then leading the picks like that because everybody's already close to the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think that's one thing we need to adjust going further. <clears throat> but overall, I don't think it was bad. Uh, let me get to the comments here. Kim. Bruce even said, too, we're not as it went this far. I think he's talking about the curl. I mean, the hitch route, and he's talking about the uh, O.J. Howard. And I think most fans understand the one, the O.J. Howard, is O.J. Howard played bad. That one's not on Winston. Fortunately, Winston's got to take the rap for it, but it's just whatever it is. Uh, Cam, I agree. Uh, Anthony, yeah, but the one that were his fault, he needs to limit. He's guaranteed to throw an INT, and that's sad. It's the nature of the beast in the game. Uh, you just can you put more turnover touchdowns up than turnovers. And when are these turnovers in key situations? This week, yes, it was in key situations. I'm not going to argue it. But to just say they were bad decisions, weren't bad decisions. Well, the one was bad decision, the, the, the screen pass. Like I said, you lose yards no matter what on that play. There's no throwing that ball away without taking a penalty. You got to take a sack, throw it away for a penalty, or you do what he did and you lose the game for a pick six. Yeah, I learned from it. Um, <clears throat> Kim. Uh, Breeze threw, Breeze threw one today. They happened. Yeah, it's a passing league. It's going to happen with these pass rush. Deshaun Watson in this game's already been sacked six times already, and it's throwing a turnover. Um, honest Oscar, not reliable at all. I mean, we'll see. Um, I'm going hard on them this year. Uh, Kim says Mike played sick, and so did Devin. So what's the excuse? Uh, Anthony Torres. Mike got Mike got uh, shut down, so people keep saying, "Oh, he was sick." I don't think he was shut down, Anthony. I don't think plays really went his way. <clears throat> Maybe the sickness had something to do with it. I don't know, but I didn't really. I was watching the game. When you're at a game, it's a little different than watching it at home. You can see a lot of things. You can see body language and things like that. 
I don't think a lot of plays were coming his way. They were, they were hoping they wouldn't have to rely on Mike so much because of the illness. I think that was what the game plan was. Um, I think they thought Sherman was going to shadow him, which Sherman didn't. <clears throat> on certain plays, he came down and shadowed uh, Godwin and stuff like that. Um, but I think they played a real strategic game in San Francisco. They play, play game playing well for us. I, w- I wish I had more to say about Quan, but Quan got get kicked out the game. I don't think it was intentional the hit he did. Uh, me and myself as a defensive player, when a quarterback runs, I get overly excited because you don't get a chance to run full speed and smack him. Um, and then, you know, they pull up, and it's hard to stop full motion coming in that direction. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm glad we got the penalty, got the, got the yards, and everybody came out of that safe. Unfortunately, in this league now, we protect the quarterback, and unfortunately, Quan was uh, punished for the new le- new rules in the league. Um, Anthony says, how we fix the O-line? They played play good on the run. If you notice a lot of those runs, I didn't post any videos of that. I'm going to probably try to get something in before um, game time Thursday. Uh, a lot of those runs came to Alex Kappa side. Alex Kappa has been playing really well, especially in run support. Didn't give up a whole lot of pass blocking. I have to double check to make sure I was good. Um, <laughs> Kim, I'm going to get that in a second. Alex Kappa has really turned a new leaf, man. He's, he's looking real confident. And I know he took a, a butt whooping in the Cleveland game, but that's stuff you learned. Those some of those guys are all pros that did that to you. If you're taking that from them, learn from it. Like you say, learn from it. If you're not learning anything from week to week on mistakes and stuff that you could have changed or made different, then it was just a whooping for no reason or you lost for no reason. <clears throat> um Kim says, uh Caleb was waived. That's a start. Uh definitely. Well, he wasn't good from the beginning. And he's not good now. So I don't really have nothing else to say about Caleb Ben and not then a farewell goodbye Havita saying goodbye um it is what it is you got to make changes he's gonna hold people accountable and I think that's what Winston needs to do as well if somebody's not running the right route and stuff live the it's the hardest thing I get I mean I I totally understand what Winston is thinking I totally understand it you you, you think you can make some type of play that isn't there or sometimes you just think it's gonna happen and you're just gonna have to to suck that just to take it Winston and be a selfish dude a little bit and you know throw the ball away or throw it at the feet I don't care what the fans say if the play is not there and the guy ran the wrong route let the coaching staff and people beat them up that guy up for running the wrong route and I know Winston doesn't put blame on anybody doesn't throw anybody under the bus but I can get sometimes when Aaron Rodgers and big Ben Roethlisberger do stuff like that and point blame at people because at the end of the day, the quarterback's taking the the, the punishment, the, the verbal punishment, because that's all the the fans see. They just think you just threw a bad pass when really the guy was not where he was supposed to be, that we practiced all week. You didn't do what we were supposed to do in the game plan. Now the quarterback's got to improvise and make things happen. I think a lot of that happens. A lot of these stuff ain't designed. Sometimes these quarterbacks got to ad-lib a little bit. Unfortunately, our line isn't that good where you can ad-lib a little bit. But that's where a lot of the situation happens in these games. And we're, we're lucky if we get five good seconds to throw the ball, and that's if somebody's open. Back to the comments here. Um, how do we fix the – oh, okay, I got on that. Caleb was wave. It, it's week one. Arians started off two and three in Arizona. Um before they finish the season 10 and 6, it's a complex system. Everybody's got the new learn their role. I know people don't want to hear that, so I'm not going to sit up here and feed it to you again. But it is what it is. We didn't get blown out. We lost to a team we should have won, and it's our fault. Bucks beating Bucks. I'm going to use Arians' term. Bucks beating Bucks. That's, that's what Louisville did. Jimmy Garoppolo didn't beat us. Mm-mm. The running game didn't beat us. Mm-mm. We beat ourselves. Beat ourselves right on up out of the stadium. For our first home loss in the season under Bruce Arians. That was all on us. Notice I haven't said much about our defense because they played well. Offense left them in crappy situations multiple times this game. They elevated, turned it out field goals. If they didn't come up with a play a certain part in the game, I'm not really going to hold them accountable because they played well most of the game when it could have been a lot worse. Offense should, it should have been the other way. Offense helping the defense out and bailing them out like the defense did them. But that's why it's a team game. So, to me, this week, defense gets a pass. Shaq Barrett gets the only sack of the game. Uh, Devin White plays decent. Jordan Whitehead played like a madman possessed. He was everywhere at that line of scrimmage making tackles left and right. Vita Vea and Dominic Sue played very well. Again, 
It's not about sacks in this defense. It's about penetration disruption. They did that to Jimmy Garoppolo. Though it didn't turn out with sacks, that's where we get these edge rushers now and get these guys familiar with beating people on the edge and getting, clean, getting these cleanup sacks because there's a lot of times that we missed some sacks that should have been made, <clears throat> but it's the game. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the defense. I give them a, I give them a B. The defense played very well in this game. Didn't let Kittle get off and get crazy. Kept the receivers under check most as you could. You kept the quarterback in check. You kept the running game in check as best as you could. I give them a B this game. Offense, I, I have to say a D. I wouldn't say a total failure because the running game, we got it going. Well, though it's not over 100 yards plus like we were accustomed with Doug Martin that year, it's a, it's a work in progress from what we have. I'm going to look back at the comments. Anthony, we only had one sack. Oh, I did see the defense play good, or was the 49ers that bad? True, they did that. Yeah, everything can't be just stats. We're like, oh, we, we didn't have five sacks. Dude, I don't care about that. I, if you're disrupting and you're forcing bad throws, and there's a lot of bad throws by Garoppolo, probably because of his pressure. And I know people got on Gerald McCoy about it. He was always leading in pressures. It's important. that you, If you make the quarterback feel uncomfortable, isn't that what we say about Jameis Winston? You're pressured, so you force error throws. Yeah, it changes the tra trajectory on passes. It means something. Does it turn out to be a, a sack or interception? I mean, only only each man is responsible for their job. You can't force to get the pressure on somebody, but the DB leaves somebody wide open, so the pressure didn't matter. Because the DB didn't cover the guy in the actual three seconds that he needed to cover him. <clears throat> but that's not going to be the issue this year. Vernon Hargraves, oh, I can't go out without saying Vernon Hargraves. Congratulations. I know we follow each other on IG. Um, uh, I know that had to feel really good for you to get the interception, but I loved your locker room <clears throat> conversation. You didn't go all high on yourself and toot your own horn like you did when you were younger. Uh, when you got the interception, you said, I got an interception, but we lost. It doesn't even matter. That's that's a guy maturing. Um, we need to get better. Uh, we need to find a way to come up with plays we need to come up with. He's right. But I don't really put in much blame on them. They play very well. I know MJ, my boy, one of the Tar Heels, got beat on that wheel route or that double move on the outside. I, I got to look at it. I don't have, co I don't have coaches uh, fill them up yet. It should be up either tomorrow or before the Thursday game. Uh, I got beat, but over. like I said, the defense played well. Unfortunately, it's a passing league. You're not going to shut everybody down all game long. It's just impossible in today's game, especially with penalties and playing defense so long and extending defense to drives. Uh, it's going to be tough. Um, yeah. Special teams. Oh, yeah, the special teams. The the punt. Yeah, and the punt earlier, they got hit off the back of Dare Ogunbowale. See, I told you I was going to get his name. Uh, the lettuce with a short field defense came up strong on that. Held him to a three. Uh, TJ Logan did fairly well returning kicks. I know he doesn't know the playbook too well. That's why you didn't really see him on offense. But this boy has lightning and fast speed. Um, I think it will be an asset to this team. And I'm just happy we got Tar Heels on the team now instead of all FSU guys. So, you know. Uh, I don't think I'm missing much else. Uh, I'll give, you know, my predictions for next week. Is that I just really want to get a fan reaction show like Peter today. And uh, show you some film by BA and stuff. Uh, that's really one to get through. I got more videos and stuff, but I'm not really going to do all that. I think I showed you what I wanted you to see. Um, my, my my thing to you fans is don't get all crazy and get all upset. Um, you know, with the loss today, it's disappointing. It's at home, and you know you could have got the win. It's just one game. Let's keep going. Let's trust in the process now. Um, oh, you said the fourth down. Uh, Aaron said it best. You risk it, get the biscuit, man. You, you guys were preaching that. We were happy about it when he came here, and that's exactly what he did. He said, I got greedy. They false started on the field goal and gave us the extra yards. Um, we went for it. It was a good It was a good call. Um, it was a half second off. Chris should have sat down and gave Winston that lane to throw in instead of kind of sliding over when that happens. When all parts are moving all around you, you just stay still. So they can get that right to you. Guy made a good play on the ball. That's what that is. But you're going to get that with Bruce Arians. I said to think to a guy next to me, and he agreed full whole, wholeheartedly. I'd rather play to win than play not to lose. We've been playing scared for a long time and not playing to win. We're playing to win now. 
Bruce Arians is trying to put six on the board, not put up field goals and play safe, and hopefully somebody will mess up and let us get a win. Nah, he's playing to win, man. And uh, I like that new attitude here and that we're trying to play to win and live with the results. I can live with somebody trying to win and be competing in games. I can live with that. I can't. I can't live with somebody playing scared. This playing the plan. Hopefully, we make it till tomorrow. Nah, that's that time is over. Over. Aggressive defense. Now we got to have aggressive offense. And when these two teams, when these two parts get together, along with the special teams, and Matt Gay. Let me. Let me. I'm mentioning you. Played very well. Kicked all the field goals. And and uh, I know I'm going, to, going off on a tangent, but I said this too. Did you notice that we've made more field goals this season, field goals, extra points, and stuff like that this extra season, uh, this this season and off season, than we had the past three seasons? But why is that? Do you ever think about that? Do you think it's the kicker? No, Santos was here. And you think the one thing that stayed the same between all those kickers, you know what it was? It was the punter, the guy that's holding the ball. You swapped it out and put a new punter in the system. And now you're making field goals regularly. What do you think? I think that made a difference. I think it was the holder. I think he was sabotaging kicks. Well, I ain't going to say sabotage. I think he was the one that was messing up everything. Was the one that was the holder. Put a new guy in, you're making kicks. Cause and effect. One thing, the, the common denominator stayed the same. It was the punter and the holder. But you changed out at least four to five kickers. Just saying. Um... Carolina, what should we expect? Uh, I'll go into that later this week. What you're going to expect in Carolina is an easy game plan. Stop Christian McCaffrey. Devin White and Levante David can cover can cover old Greg Olson. That's who all I'm worried about. The little small receivers, they're going to get them on drag routes and try to buy them time and throw it, and they outrun us. That's all they're going to do. I've got Carolina figured out like a book between their formations and their runs and stuff like that. Cam Newton is easier than ever to figure out now that he's not a huge run threat like he did and his shoulder's hurting. So you're not going to see a whole lot of deep passes like you before. I think he's messed up his shoulder for the long term. And if they can get some hits on him and get him uncomfortable where he's not going to make those deep balls, I think we can win this game and beat them down for once for a long time. It's going to be a Christian McCaffrey show. Wherever McCaffrey is, that's where the ball's going to go. They're going to hand it off to him inside. They're going to throw passes out to him in the flats. Just limit his opportunities in open field. And that offense is going to look totally different. I've got the Carolina figure out. They need to call me, and I will tell you exactly what's going to happen. I can tell you. I can tell you. I can promise and tell you with full confidence that I know what's going on in that Carolina game when they come out on offense. Brady going to the chip. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about the Patriots. I'll just say this. They have a system. They run their system. They pick guys up in their system. And they remove people that see things other way. That's how I wish we did things here. Everybody, it's a business. It's not about having fun anymore. People want to get paid. People want to win, keep their jobs. It's not about having fun anymore. So I, that was tough for me learning about, you know, doing media broadcasts and going from a player standpoint to try to be an overall standpoint. And I think that's why I think me and Mike Clayton get along a lot because we think a lot like players versus uh, media personnel that just go off of reactions. You have to understand why people do what they do before you can just assess a situation. I don't know. That's right, Anthony. Call me. I got the game plan. Like I said, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I've been always a student of the game. And if Richard Bailey, I should get my head coach on here. If I get Richard Bailey on here, he will tell you. I knew everybody's job. Was it on offense or was it on defense? I knew everybody's job. I could play anybody's position. And the half-ass paid attention. And I, and I knew what was going on all the time. I could play at any spot. And um, this is just being a student of the game, even on a professional level. Always want to learn something. But let me get out of here. I'm rambling now. Thank you guys for, you know, coming in, tuning in. Peter's show and my show. Uh, it's going to happen every week. I'm going to do Mondays at 3 o'clock. And I'll probably try to do another. Uh, I'll probably try to do a uh, game plan thing uh, for Thursday and stuff like that um, for the opposing game. This week is going to be different because we have a Thursday game. So I'm going to try to get something in earlier. But definitely. 
See me every Monday at 3 p.m. here live on Bucks Report and Buck and Blake Sports. Follow me on Facebook at Buck and Blake Sports. My web my website at Buck and Blake Sports. And all the social media pages that you see below. And check out my sponsors and people uh, you should know off of my page. But I will end this as we always do. Um, you're the master of everything. What you do with your life, what you do with this is entirely up to you. Thank you guys. God bless. And uh, fire those cannons. <laughs>